there and welcome back to another Miraculous Ladybug Season 5 review. And today we're going to be talking about the latest episode to drop, Adoration, which fills in the gaps of the season somewhat and puts a particular emphasis on the character of Zoe and her relationship with Marinette. And yeah, really isn't all that much to say beyond that, so let's just get into it. So yeah, the episode starts off in an unexpectedly wholesome way, with Zoe and Andre sitting on the roof of the hotel looking in Andre's secret dream stash where he keeps the evidence of his film career, shutting away his dreams because Audrey told him to. And it seems that Zoe wants to put a photo of her crush in the vault, just like she did her old pair of shoes when she debuted, to try and forget about it, as it's an unrealistic prospect. But Andre, for once in his life, proves himself a decent parental figure, telling Zoe that she needs to fight for her love, using his marriage to Audrey as an example. He says that he wrote the film that Emily starred in as a way to impress Audrey and proclaim his love for her. He even changed his name, presumably to Andre and not the other way around. And honestly, I'm not sure what his parents were thinking with that original name. Like, Anaximandre, is that it? Is it meant to be like the Greek philosopher? <laughs> and apparently he also just changed the entire direction of his life, which, well, yeah, he is very rich and successful, so there is that, but since he's pretty much a leashed and whipped dog for his wife and daughter, I wouldn't exactly think that this is the type of advice that he should be handing out to his stepdaughter. And I think Zoe would actually have to be insane to take this man's advice. But sure, why not? At the very least, he tells her to hold on to her dreams before he's called away to give Audrey a foot rub. Oh, imagine running a luxury hotel that likely has a professional masseuse and a spa, and yet you're still being forced to give your wife a foot rub at the end of the day. Like, if it's him that was offering to do it, that's one thing, right? That's fine. But she's screaming out for him. Ugh, dude's a doormat. Anyway, he tells her that since there's only two weeks left of school, now's the perfect time to confess to her crush, and she smiles down at the photo that's clearly one of the main characters. And honestly, once you get a couple more scenes into the episode, it becomes very clear as Marinette. Anyway, the next day at school, Zoe and Marinette, as the 8th and 9th grade representatives of the class, are chosen to organise the school end of year dance. The entire event. Which honestly feels like a recipe for disaster. But it is what it is. And so Marinette takes Zoe to her room, and they both act like Zoe has never been there before, but I'm pretty sure she has been there before. You know, in the episode where Marinette infiltrates the party at Gabe's house dressed as a caterer, or a butler, something like that. I think the episode's called Gabriel Agrest, right? Right? And Marinette calls herself Marino, and it's just her in a suit with a fake moustache. But yeah, I guess we'll just forget that ever happened. And she's given Zoe the grand tour. And Zoe is clearly starstruck, telling us that yes, Marinette is indeed her crush. Which is very sad, honestly. And speaking of sad, Marinette shows her her treasure chest that has a photo of Adrian in it, alongside all the presents she's bought for every single occasion. And they're pre-wrapped as well. Wow. That is... <laughs> wow. It's just a little bit pathetic. Just a tiny, teensy bit. Zoe then picks up Marinette's sketchbook and gushes about her dress design, which... Marinette wants to make for the upcoming dance, but first, she needs to collect some accessories for it. And before we can even do that, we have to endure even more cringe as Marinette's stalker board falls down and reveals all her magazine cuttings and model photos of Adrian. And if this doesn't convince Zoe that maybe it's best to just never mention her feelings at all and move on, guess nothing will. I know that I, personally, would be backing away slowly. Marinette then decides that the dance should be the Eiffel Tower, as that's where she wants to have her first kiss with Adrian. And then she just straight up asks Zoe if she in turn can ask Andre to give them a permit for the dance to be held there. Jesus, rich people, I'm telling you what. Just a normal girl with a normal life. My ass. And of course, they walk over to the hotel hand in hand, where it's revealed that since Zoe's, you know, nice to the staff, they in turn love her back, and Chloe's kind of left out in the cold. Good. Kid deserves it. She needs a reality check. Anyway, Zoe's protected by Armand the butler, and by her stepdad, and even Audrey, who pretty much tells Chloe to just get a grip. Because, you know, she's a terrible parent anyway who doesn't care about her daughters. She doesn't even bother to remember who's who. And that's kind of sad. And once again, it becomes clearer and clearer as to why Chloe turned out the way she did. Oh my god. Audrey should never have had children. Anyway, they shoot her away, and Zoe asks Andre a question. Well, she asks the mayor of Paris a question. And does he have that portrait around wherever he goes just in case? Because, you know, that's some dedication. Anyway, they pitch the idea for their dance, and it seems like they've really gone all out. They want a concert, and a DJ, and a buffet, and even a trampoline at the bottom of the tower for people that don't like dancing, or seemingly don't want to partake in any of the other festivities. Just a normal girl with a normal life. 
What is the budget for this school dance? Yikes! Anyway, Andre hints that this would be the perfect place for Zoe to confess her love, and that he also wants to film it all so they can all keep it, before he officially approves the dance. And he tells them not to tell Chloe about any of this, and hmm, looking like he's slowly breaking free of his daughter's whims as well. But even then, still a bit pathetic from him, because imagine being scared of your teenager throwing a tantrum. Dude needs to step up. How did he possibly become mayor? We then cut away to Adrian, who's having a family lunch with Gabe, Natalie, and Gorilla. And you know what? Good for Gorilla! He's finally getting called up for the joint meal. Part of the family. And here, we get more Natalie and Gabe back and forth, as Natalie steps up for Adrian once again, and manipulates Gabe into letting Adrian go to the school dance with Marinette after he'd initially refused. And honestly, whilst this is all coming a bit too late, as Natalie has let Gabe abuse Adrian for like four seasons straight, it's still pretty wholesome to see her step up into the role of cool aunt, or really just into the role of mum. I'm really hoping she doesn't end up dying on him and leaving him completely alone except for Gorilla. How depressing would that ending be? You know, and I guess living with Gorilla would probably be wholesome. But can the dude even talk? Regardless, we then move on to Lila chilling in Chloe's suite as Gabe yells at her over the phone. Well, it's an alliance ring really, but does it still count as a phone if it's no longer a phone? Just a ring? Hmm, maybe I guess. Anyway, he calls Lila to scold her. And she tells him not to worry, as she has a cunning plan. A plan that will require the help of both Chloe and Sabrina so they can bring down Marinette once and for all. And this is exactly the kind of stuff I meant in my Zoe is a useless character video. Because even in her character focused episodes, she's not the main event character. She's just a bystander. They've added that she has a romantic interest in Marinette, but even with a half sister, the focus is quickly shifting to Marinette, not to Zoe. Just not great writing in my eyes. And so, while Zoe and Marinette continue to plan, Chloe tears into Sabrina, calling her an underling, not a true friend, causing her to break down in tears and get akumatized into Vanisher, which was all part of the plan. And this time, Vanisher has the power of the dog to recall items. And we then come back to Marinette and Zoe, where they have a little awkward heart-to-heart -heart about how difficult it is to tell the person you love how you feel about them. And really, it is only a little bit awkward in hindsight, because Zoe is telling Marinette how hard it is when Marinette is in fact the person she loves. And I mean, Zoe's the one that brought it up. She brought it up in the first place. And I don't know, if she was asked the question, I'd understand it. And maybe she was working up the courage to try to tell her, but to me it just feels a bit strange. Because then in turn, it leads to Marinette trying to solve everything and going real in depth in trying to help her confess, even though the person she wants to confess to you know, is in love with somebody else. And then on the other hand, whilst awkward, it also reminds me that these kids are way too mature for high schoolers. Or at least, my high school. I guarantee, this sort of stuff, it would not go down like this in my school experiences, that's for sure. Anyway, like I said, they don't feel like realistic high schoolers at this point. But then, the high school vibes suddenly appear out of nowhere when Marinette immediately blabs to Alia about how Zoe has a crush on somebody in their year, even though I feel like that conversation felt like it was meant to be a bit confidential. And then she gets slapped down by Alia for thinking that she'd be of any use in the love department to begin with, considering she's struck out with Adrian into the double digits by this point. And speaking of Adrian, since apparently he's the only dude in their year level who could get a girl to possibly have a crush on him, I mean, poor other dudes. I mean, Kim is literally the archetypal Chad. Put some respect on his name, please, and thank you. And then, I mean, you know, the rest of the boys. Ivan canonically has a girlfriend. Same with Nino. If you're thinking of guys who already love somebody else, surely those names would spring to mind, right? No? Straight to Adrian? And I don't know if it's her obsession with him talking, or it's just paranoia, but you know, whatever. The two then scoot off to go get things prepared and organized for the dance, or at least for the preparations for the dance, with Sabrina running along behind them. And this is probably the part that I find to be the dumbest in the episode. She's just running around, running, and somehow keeping up with them on a motor scooter. She only has a power of invisibility, right? Not super speed. So this is a bit strange. Anyway, she touches stuff from all the places that Marinette visits so she can be framed. And of course, they do indeed succeed in framing Marinette. And honestly, this is an S-tier plan from Lila. An S-tier plan. And the best part about it is that she isn't even there. So she manages to avoid any consequences whatsoever. So yeah, Chloe convinces everybody that Marinette has a kleptomanic episode, which Zoe then takes the blame for. As you know, she be simping. And it got pretty bad. Bad to the point that Marinette was literally being expelled. And honestly though, is this even an expellable offense? Surely when a child's stealing from people, that's an issue that should be addressed by the parents, right? 
It's not like she was stealing from the school. I don't think socially isolating her by immediately kicking her out of the school is very appropriate. I know it was about to end, but still. But then again, the principal does dress up as an owl to fight crime with no powers, so maybe his poor judgement actually does make sense. Anyway, luckily Marinette's able to slip away to transform, and reveals that Vanisher is behind everything. And then they start to fight, and holy shit, Marinette ain't playing today. Check out this kick to Sabrina! Woo, see ya! Usually it feels like Ladybug pulls her punches, but not today it seems. And yeah, Cat Noir then turns up, and you know, long story short, well, not really long story, Short story, they kick her ass. Like, it wasn't even hard for them to do this. And fair enough, fight was short. The episode's more about character building and personal arcs than anything else. Wasn't about the action this time. And then, after all that's done, Chloe's just straight up allowed to walk away with no consequences because her dad's soft and the principal is scared of her dad. And on top of that, I guess you can't technically prove that she was working with Vanisher, even if the heroes did outright state it. And yeah, then we move on again. We hit the sad scene where Marinette encourages Zoe to confess her love to Adrian, only for it to be revealed that Zoe loves her. Whew. And yeah, this relationship dead in the water. And they play that goddamn sad music. And honestly, this scene was actually legit sad. What the hell? I'm not here to get upset. I'm here to laugh and meme. Damn it, Asterix! But yeah, great scene actually. Although, not very realistic for real teenagers in my opinion. I'll press X to doubt that a regular teenage friendship would not get weird when one of them confesses to unrequited feelings. And then on top of that, everybody is just so happy for their crush to be with somebody else. That's a level of maturity that in my 20s, I see that most people still don't have. But yeah, yeah, sure, this would definitely happen in real life, sure. But regardless, it was a great scene. And so, off Marinette goes to confess to Adrian as she's been inspired by Zoe, and she does it, and it's all sweet, and they're about to kiss, until in the funniest moment of the episode, legit the funniest moment of the season, and I don't think it was intentionally funny either, Gabe uses his magic ring to cock block his son and sends him inside. And also, that close-up zoom out of nowhere? Oof. <laughs> Couldn't stop laughing. And then Adrian just leaves her there out in the dark in the cold. Oof, that is ice cold. Imagine how you'd feel. That's got to be the biggest crash and burn in the show's history, right? Oh, it hurts. And it's made even funnier by Marinette then looking up and seeing Gabe standing there in the window in the dark and then just him backing up into the shadows. Oh, classic. I actually really love this episode. It was a bit ridiculous at times, but a lot of fun. And so yeah, that's pretty much the end. End of the episode, end of the video. And so I would like to remind you that these are just my opinions and now I'd like to hear yours. What did you think of the episode? You like it? Hate it? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know.